Um, obviously, Cincinnati's got a bunch of different guys out there than they did a year ago. Just uh, how are they the same? How are they different? What just impresses you when you see them stand out on tape right now? Well, when you look at it, you know, they have a lot of returning offensive linemen still. Guys have played a lot for them. Ben Bryant has been in this system for a while. You know, had a stint there at Eastern Michigan. But um, ben, they brought Ben back for a reason. He knows the system. That he's a guy that they're comfortable with. Uh, and they know what they're going to get out of him. You look at the tight ends, you look at Lenny and Josh, you know, those are two really good players. The re- a lot of receivers back. Trey Tucker's been there for a long time. Charles McClellan's been there for a long time. So there's a lot of guys playing in this system for multiple years. Uh, so you definitely see a lot of consistency in them. Uh, they know what they're doing. They know how they want to operate. And, uh, you know, Coach Fickle, you know, Gino, they know what they want to do and who they want to be offensively for sure. Um, kind of just elaborated on it there. You know a lot of names as you coach at Cincinnati. Sure. Does it make it different when you're watching film of guys that you've kind of coached up um, on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, you, you know, you do know them a little bit better, but you're also sitting here. I mean, that was 2019. We're sitting here, you know, I stink at math. Three years later, you know, you know, Lenny is a different player than he was three years ago. You know, Josh is a different player than he was three years ago. You know, Charles, you know, coming up. He had an ACL when I was there. You know, he was out for that season, really. Uh, you saw some of the things in spring ball uh, of who he was. So, so you know him. You know, you know, I know who Dylan O'Quinn is. You know, you, you know who those guys are. But uh, there's still, uh, you know, three years of maturation and development in those guys too. So, uh, you know, and you can see that they've all gotten better. Again, they're good. That whole operation, you know, they know what they're doing. And uh, Coach Fickle and Gino and all those guys, they do a great job of developing, recruiting good players and developing the players that they've got. It's kind of a deep cut question, but I know that's a place where that has had success down the years historically across different coaches, but it seems like Coach Fickle's taken it to a different level, obviously making the playoff. What works? As somebody who was inside it for a year, just what about the way he runs that program, builds that program, you know, week to week, year to year works? And with a game like this, are you sometimes maybe preparing for culture a little bit as well as scheme in terms of saying, I know they've got some new faces, but here's what you can count on them to be? Well, again, Coach Fickle is a phenomenal coach. They've had the success that they've had for a reason. Uh, and Coach Fickle is very true to his DNA and who he is and, as I said earlier, what, what he wants his program to be. You know, you know, every level, all phases of it. And he does a great job of setting the standards and expectations and then holding people accountable to that. And, and again, that's, you know, in every layer, every realm of that. Um, but, you know, he, he is very true to his DNA and what he believes in, works and runs uh, effectively as a football program. And you see success of that. Uh, so, you know, he wants a, you know, they say tough, tough and nasty, right? You know, like they, they want to be that. They, you know, they, and they build that. They work that. That is part of their cu- culture and DNA. Uh, and they are true to that. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a great challenge for us to go down there and, uh, and go in there and, you know, go get in that fight with them. So, uh, but, yeah, yeah they, uh, they've got good players and they know the culture. You know, I, I think – I don't care who you're playing against. You're always playing against their culture on some level. You know, you really are, you know, and, and what is their identity and what is their DNA. And you're matching up, yeah, scheme for scheme, but you're also not matching up those, those DNAs and those identities also. You know, you could be playing, you know, Idaho. We're still playing against Idaho's culture. We're still playing, uh, you know, against Western Kentucky's culture. You know, Western Kentucky have a great culture, history, and tradition of winning a lot of football games. You know, so you're always playing that every week, you know, regardless of the opponent. But there's certainly somebody that you are playing that for sure. Coach Allen called Miles Jackson a pleasant surprise. Uh, what about him has kind of surprised you? How you know how well has he fit in in your defense, and yeah. just how you know how well has he gotten acclimated to playing here? Yeah, he, he, you know, you want to say, I, and I know why Coach says, says that because you're still always waiting for the production. But even when you go back to what we saw out of Miles in spring ball, we knew he was going to help this football team this year. Uh, and, and it was in leadership, it was in production and, and practices, uh, you know, it was in just how hard he plays, right? Like, you know, uh, the, the interception, but then also the fumble recovery. The fumble recovery is just a result of playing hard. We talk about the ball finds energy, and he is a guy that always has energy, right? And he always has that effort. He always has that strain. He's always working. Uh, and so it's, 
it's also no surprise, if that makes sense. I'm not trying to undercut Coach, you know, uh, Coach Allen, but there's no surprise, too, because we've seen evidence and proof of that. But you're still always waiting you know, to still go see it in the games. And, uh, but, you know, it, it's, uh, he, just, he, he does the right things. He handles this business the right way. He works. He fights. He competes. He strains. Right? Shocker that you see the young man you know, producing on the field. Hey, Coach, hey. your thoughts. Uh, Jalen Williams, he, he hits the block on the, on the, on the yeah. tackle attempt. He downs the ball to two. He's obviously playing DB for you guys. What stands out about him? Why is he a guy who can make different kinds of impact plays? Well, that's a great, great question because he does do a lot of different things. We put him in a lot of different roles because he's a smart football player. You, you, know, you, you can't ask a guy to understand the concepts of where we're working those gunners to place themselves on those you know, uh, you know, plus territory punts. He understands that, right? You know, he did a great job there coming off the edge, right? Just understood the snap counts, understood the cadence, boom, got a great jump, did a great job carving, carving tight over the edge, didn't round the, round the edge at all. You know, if he's a half step wider in his angle, doesn't get there. You know, so it, it's just all around smart football player, un understands the game. He's been here for a long time. You know, and we've got some young guys that are going to get that way too. It just, it takes time to get him to that point sometimes. But he's done a great job, yeah. Coach, I know people have talked about just the, the type of person that Taiwan Mullen is, and I mm -hmm. think even Scott Dolson earlier this season was talking about just um, like his leadership and, and kind of how he's stayed steady you know, sure. through his time at the program. Um, what has just stood out to you about him? What, what makes him a good leader and a good person? Well, it's, it's the word you just used, steady. Yeah, right. it, it, it's hard to be a good leader if you're not, you know, we talked last week about consistency. If you're not consistently showing up, if you're not consistently performing that way, if you're not consistently holding yourself to high standards, it's really hard to hold other people to those standards. And, and that's what you see out of Taiwan and his leadership is just that steadiness, that consistency. He just shows up, keeps showing up, and keep, keeps working. But, but he does have a great personality. He, you know, he also has an infectious personality that uh, makes it easy for him to speak up when he needs to speak up. He's not, the, you know. Cam Jones, you see a little bit more of the emotion, the passion, right? You know, Taiwan's not necessarily that. He is also true to himself and who he needs to be as a leader uh, and his personality. But uh, when Taiwan speaks up, everybody listens because he's steady. Coach, uh, Cincinnati has, for the last two years, been a second-half team. When you mm -hmm. watch them offensively, they really like to get after it in the second half on teams. This past week, the second half was not great defensively. Uh, are any concerns going forward against a team that excels uh, on that backside? Sure, you, you know, they, you're right. They, <clears throat> they, they do a great job of finishing. And, they, and, uh, and I will say this for our young men, you also – uh, you know, we weren't great at some moments there in the second half, but what did we do well at the end of the fourth quarter and, and overtime, right? And you really look at all three games. We have finished well in all three games at the end when we needed to be at our best, we were at our best. Um, yeah, we, we've identified what some of those issues were, what, you know, communication, you know, making sure all 11 guys are on the same page, that we're, we're playing the calls, that our eyes are right and where they need to be uh, on some of the explosive plays that we gave up and that, you know, we need to tackle better too. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've already attacked those and uh, started discussing those and having some conversations for practice plans for this week to fix those. Um, but, uh, you know, I know our young men, one of the th great things about them is they've got heart, they've got fight, and they've got grit. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go to battle with that every day. And, uh, and, again, I think you've seen that from our guys, how they've worked to fight and finish uh, all three games so far this year. And we have to do it again on, on Saturday because it's going to be that type of game for sure.